Hello, and welcome to Universal Mixing Part 5. Now, this is a video a lot of you have been asking for. We are going to remaster a bunch of songs for an anniversary release from Ian and Christy McKenna out of Edinburgh, Scotland. And it's going to be fast, fun, and easy. Let's do this. Okay, now before we begin, let me just say a little bit about mastering. Like everything in life, mastering is all things at all times. Meaning, mastering is incredibly difficult and incredibly easy at the same time. Knowing when to increase a stereo width, when to collapse it, when to use a single band compressor, when to use multiband, when to use tube, when to use solid state, when to enhance harmonics, when not to, when to set a de -esser, where to set the de -esser. There is a whole myriad of subtle things that happen that add up to a degree of difficulty that only experience can truly provide. That said, at the end of the day, what are we really dealing with? We're dealing with one simple noise element that, like all noise elements, is governed by the spectrum of noise and universal rules. This means that using a hyper-EQ like COS Pro makes balancing that noise element to noise incredibly easy. Now, when I was a wee lad, I always used to hear people refer to the British sound and the American sound. <laughs> I used to hear that a lot. And all that ever meant was the British sound tended to follow brown noise, while the American sound tended to follow pink noise. That was the only difference. Today, because of speaker development, modern mastering tends to favor a blend of white, pink, and brown noise. But still, that noise, all noise, adheres to universal rules. That means that balancing that noise element to noise is incredibly easy. All right? So let me put this away. Let's bring up our first song. Okay. So, now I'm going to play... Uh, the song as it was, I'm going to turn this stuff off here first. I'm going to play the song as it was released before. Now, you can notice here on all of these songs, we did the exact same thing. We have COS Pro, we have Mix Monolith, second, and then we have the Brainworks uh, Limiter. And we have that set to Transient Monster. We just use that preset, and that's it. And I'll, I'll tell you why we're, we're using a limiter here. Because remember, this, these songs were mastered, which means there was compression, limiting, um, enhancement. The, the low end was collapsed, was you know at, from 80 hertz on down, mono, because low end is omnidirectional. So you always want to have from 80 hertz down at least, you want to collapse that down. And so it's mono. Um, and all of that was done. So what we want to do is just enhance these songs. But... I noticed that when I got them, they were all at minus 17. The volume was minus 17 integrated luffs, which is way too low. Even for back in the day, they should have had at least been minus 12. Um, when the, the loudness wars was fu in full effect, you know, with CDs and back in the days of CDs, things would be minus 10, minus 8, even all the way up to minus 16. They were just crushed. And if you look at them, looked at them on a... Uh, on a like a wave of it, it was just like this big, fat, juicy worm, all right? But at, at the very least, these should have been at minus 12. They're at minus 17. Today, because of streaming standards, you want minus 14. Some uh, platforms use minus 16, which means they'll just turn it down by 2 dB, you know, themselves. But um, minus 14 is pretty much, that's where you want to run things nowadays, which I love because you get a dynamic range. No longer is your dynamic range crushed, all right? But these were minus 17, too low, so we have a limiter. And we're doing that the same thing to all of these. Now, why we have, we put mix monolith before our limiter on all of these is because when you feed that limiter, um, or any, which, whichever one you're going to use, but when you feed it a balanced noise element, at minus 18 on that preset, you're going to get an output of minus 14. 
every time. So we made sure that we, we had uh, balanced noise, you know, going into that limiter at minus 18 and all of the outputs were actually, they were minus 14.2, which is perfect for streaming. Okay. And we did that for everything. So you can set it and forget it, do that for all your stuff. All right. Now, <clears throat> let me take this off here, reset the EQ so you can see what the shape was and let me play the song. Not bad. Dull. Kind of quiet and dull. It's following ground noise up to like 5K and then it's going to white noise. Okay? So even back then it was still adhering to 3 and 5. Okay? But now you can see that what we actually want to do to it is this shape. And we're using this shape for all of these things. And you can pretty much use this shape for all of your music. The only change you're going to make, okay, is right here at 500. Okay, well, first let me just show you that what we're doing. So from, from 50 to 100, we are doing white noise, okay? So we want white noise here. The only non-primary elbow point I use is, as you can see, 62.8. And the only reason I did that is right here, instead of kind of like a hard elbow, if you think about it, I wanted to round this off a little bit. So I, I put a, a secondary elbow point at 62.8, and I put that to inverted pink. That way it starts to kind of have a nice gradual rounding, all right? But then at 50, we, we did 10.5. At 30, we did 18. And then from, so this is one, this is white noise here. And then from 100 to 500, we are following pink noise from 500 to 3K. We are following brown noise. And then from brown noise up to 10K, we are following white noise. And then for our upper roll off from 10K to 15K, we're doing minus 15. And from 15K to, to um, all the way up, we're doing minus 33. Okay, now that's basically the shape. If you start there, you're going to be, be golden for all of your stuff. The only thing changes you're going to be making is see this 500 right here? It's either going to 1, 3, and 5 are in full effect. It's either going to be 500 or it'll be 300, which as you can see, it drops everything down here. <clears throat> Excuse me. So you're going to have, obviously by dropping this down, you're going to have a little less high end and a little more low end, but still, it's still more than what was here to begin with. Or like when you get into like, like heavy, you know, like mid range guitars and things like that, this will go to 1k. Okay, but that's about the only change you'll have there, you're going to just if you start there, you'll be surprised at how easy this is. And then from at this from 3k, it'll either be 3k or it'll be 5k. So use your ears, make those little adjustments if need be, uh, for the most part, and you're going to be right where you need to be now, uh, you know, sonically frequency frequency wise okay so let's put this back where this where it was 3k put this back to 500 all right now i'm going to play the song and i'm going to hit conform turn this on Nice, opens it up before. Brings out the vocals more. You can see it because it's carving out a lot of this low mid. It's extending the low end and we're enhancing the high end. Okay, there's a volume thing, but we're set. Um, we set this, we turned this down a bit because we didn't want it to peak. So even though it was right at, at zero before, you know, peaking was right at, at zero, when you change your frequencies, you change your energy. So your peaks may stay the same, but your volume's gonna change slightly. But remember, these were all too low anyways. They were minus 17. So um, when we did that, this song in particular came out at minus 21, 
loves. Okay, so we we wanted to make sure that we were we were going to feed this this limiter right at minus twenty one because it's all about perfection, about being exact. So we set the the mo- the mix monolith to minus twenty one, and then we learned it and then set it. And you can see that the only applied gain was it turned it down by minus point one four which is literally 0.14 is all it turned it down. But by doing that, it made sure that we are feeding this exactly at minus 21. And then the only difference on this preset we made was in the gain. I think it was normally uh, 4.26, which is where it was set. And it's nice. And that's where this preset should be. And it's good. So we made up the difference. Minus 21 to minus 18 is a difference of 3D, 3 dB. So we turn this up by 3 dB and set it to 726. And when you do that, with with setting this shape here, uh, fixing the, the sonic balance of that noise element to this noise, making sure that we're feeding the limiter properly, this is the difference. So here's before. After. And that's basically what we did for all of these songs, okay? So let me go to the next one, and I'll show you. All right. Let's mute this. Bring this up, and let's get our COS Pro. All right. You can see we have the exact same shape for this song as well. Now, oh, one thing I forgot to mention. Okay, so let me put this to white noise here. The 62. Okay, get rid of him. Now, we are flattening out from 50 to 100, but say that your song had um, um, even, you know, a lot of low-end content, and you wanted to kind of have a little bit more low-end than flattening out to white uh, at 100. All you would do is just leave this at pink all the way to 50. So you would have from 50 to 500, you'd be pink noise, and we do this on a couple of these songs. Um and then from uh, 50 to 3K, we're brown. And then uh, from 3K to 10K, we're white noise. So that, w- that would be the only difference. So if you need a little bit more low end, just don't flatten out at 100. Uh, don't flatten out to white. Just leave it at pink all the way to 50, okay? And that's it. But other than that, you're going to be, again, changing from 500 to 300 to 1K or from 3K to 5K on this guy. All right, so, and again, we have Mix Monolith, which for this song, you know, it didn't drop it down to minus 21. <clears throat> we had room, so we set the Mix Monolith to minus 18. It made just the little applied uh, gain adjustment of minus 0.2, but it made sure that we were feeding the limiter, the Brainworks limiter, right at minus 18. So we, in this mon- uh, transient monster preset, we didn't make any changes. You know, originally it's 426. We didn't have to offset and make a change in, you know, of 3dB or wh- anything. We just left it. So we're feeding this minus 18, and it is spitting out uh, a result of minus 14.2 integrated LUFs, which is perfect for streaming. So... <laughs> There's that shape again. Whoops. Let me put, I forgot to put him back. 62.8. And he's inverted pink to kind of get that little roll off there. And let me play you the difference. Okay. Here's before and here's the song. I'd like to be. Vocals better, guitar is nicer.
Nice. <laughs> We're just dealing with noise, and when you're just need, dealing with noise, balancing it to noise, using noise, this, you know, the balancing that noise element, the frequency response stuff, is it's this easy. Okay, let's go to the next one. Um, so we're going to do stay. All right. <laughs> There's that shape again. All right. Again, this this song didn't need any other changes either. Um, again, here was mixed monolith, but because this song it was not drum heavy, there's a lot of percussion, but it wasn't drum heavy, um, the overall volume was minus 21, so we set mixed monolith to minus, 20, uh, minus 21 uh, target luffs. It made an applied gain uh, adjustment of minus 0 0.59 and to make sure that uh, it was feeding the, the limiter after this exactly minus 21. And then on the limiter, like the first song, we made the adjustment of 3 dB here to make up from minus 21 to minus 18. And you can see here's all our, our elbow points. And this is the difference. Before. Big difference. Here we go. Let me go somewhere where the song gets a little bit heavier. There's no real drums, but we go back here. Before. After. Same shape. Let's go to the next one, which is uh, the time of our lives. So, oop, okay. All right. So here's our elbow points, and you can see it's basically basically the same. Uh, we took 500 hertz, that elbow point at 500, and moved it down to 300. And then up here, we added an elbow point at 8K, and then from 8K to 10K, in order to give just a little smoothness to that, uh, this elbow, elbow point at 10K, uh, we changed that to pink. So we're going white, and then we just have a little bit of pink, and then we continue on. And now this song is, we moved this to the 500 hertz elbow point to 300, because this song doesn't have any uh, drums in it. There's like no percussion at all either. So it's kind of dark. And so we wanted to leave it that way. So obviously you can see that if we were at 500, just want to show you again, boom, we would have more high end. But we wanted to leave it a little dark, but keep it in, in balance with noise. So we moved the 500 to 300. Now, uh, because the song doesn't have any percussion and stuff like that, when we made sure we weren't peaking here, um, the song was at like minus 22.7 or something like that, Luffs. <clears throat> so we set the uh, mix monolith to minus 23 target Luffs, learned, and it did applied gain adjustment of only 0.38 dB, which made sure we're hitting the limiter right at minus 25. And then remember, the limiter uh, wants to be fed minus 18. So what's the difference between minus 23 and minus uh, 18? 5 dB. So on this preset, which was normally 4.26, we added 5 so that we would make up that gain, and we put it to 9.26 so that now it's the same thing as feeding this minus 18. It's spitting out minus 14.2. And here's the difference. So let me bring this up. Here it is before. There's nothing sacred anymore. We live together. We may not live together. 
I bet. Dark. Ah, there's the guitar. This is the time. This is the time of our lives. Big difference. This is the time. This is the time of our See, and that's it. So all of these, you know, as artists, we think, oh, man, I'm listening to a song. <laughs> no, you're not. You're listening to a noise element. And just and balance that noise element to noise. Uh, and it's going to be governed by the universal rules. Um, and it's all going to sound like it came from the same musical tree because it's all just noise. All right. So anyways, let's go to the next one, which will be. Thin air. Okay, now let's see what we got here. All right, so right off the bat, you can see that everything's basically the same, only right here at 100, instead of white noise, we left it at uh, pink noise because this song has, there's a lot of like tribal drums, nice low end content. And so we wanted to kind of keep that. So instead of flattening out at 100 to white noise, we left it at pink. And then instead of going all the way to 50 uh, with pink, we wanted to, you know, we didn't want this to be such a sharp elbow. So we left that 62.8 secondary elbow point and we left that at inverted pink. So that kind of rounds that off. And then up here, we decided, yeah, let's leave that 8K to one to 10K, that little pink to kind of smooth this off, okay? Um, and then on um, Mixed Monolith, since there was plenty of volume, we have it set to minus 18. Uh, applied Gain, it turned everything down by minus 1, okay? And we have that same limiter, uh, the preset. We didn't have, it, have to make any adjustments, so the preset's 4.26, and let's listen to what we have here. Okay. Here we go. Before. After. Too much. Nice, there's the vocals. Before. See, even with doing this pink noise and have, having this low end, there was an excessive amount, so it still cranked that down. Too much. There we go. Nice. So, again, all of this is just noise. You balance your noise to noise, adhere to uh, uh, Universal Rules 135, and, oh, man, let's do this, okay? Uh, let's go to the next song, which is Stick It. Okay. All right. We're back to that original shape. So white noise from white uh, from 100, a little 62.8 inverted pink to kind of round that off. Uh, pink noise to 500, brown noise to 3K, and then white noise all the way up to 10K. Okay, then we made sure we weren't peaking. Now there's some punchy drums uh, or punchy bass on this, synth bass. And so when we had the mixed monolith, now, when we made sure we weren't peaking, we were actually below 18. So instead of bringing it up and then peaking, we just put the mixed monolith to minus 19. All right. And then, which meant we had to make a 1 dB adjustment on the limiter. So instead of 4.26, we put, we set it to, we added 1 dB, 5.26. And here we go. Let me bring this up. This is before. Do 
after. Before. Oof. Let's go to the next one. This uh, remastering is not that hard. Okay, let's go to Here We Are Today. Okay. All right. So right off the bat, you can see that we took the 500 hertz elbow point where pink and brown meet, and we moved that up to 1K. Okay. And then uh, at 100, instead of following white noise, we followed pink noise. And then we left that little 62.8 uh, hertz inverted pink so that we could smooth this off. Uh, and it wasn't such a severe elbow point at 50 hertz when we're at pink. Um, but the reason that we moved 500 hertz here up to 1K is in this song, there's a lot of uh, telephone voice um, effects and things going on. So we didn't want to, to detract from that. We wanted to kind of keep that and bring that out. So you can see that, obviously, if we, we were at 500, okay, then there'd be a lot less, there'd be a lot less information here in the mids, in these high mids and stuff. So we would kind of lose the effect of that that's in this. But we went to 1K, and that puts all of that back. So, you know, not only did it not, you know, drop the, the high end down, we kind of left that nice and where we wanted it, but we also kept some nice high mids. All right. That was the, the purpose of that. Now, when we made sure we weren't peaking, uh, the mix monolith needed to be set at minus 20 so that we weren't peaking here. And it, the, the applied gain adjustment was only 0.38. Um, nope, 0.36, excuse me. And then, which meant that on our limiter, since we were, instead of minus uh, 18, we were at minus 20, we had to add 2 to the 4.26 gain, so which made it 6.26, and we're going to have an output at minus 14.2 lofts. All right, so let's listen to this before, and here we go. <laughs> So that's all, again, I'm just showing that's all you really need to do. <laughs> the hardest part, really, when using COS Pro, using a Hyper EQ and Mix Monolith, is accepting the fact that universal rules dominate your musical universe. They really do. Um, and that you just have to accept that everything that they do and that everything is just a noise. And it's just a subtle, just a reconfiguring, just rethink, th you know, noise and and sound just real quickly okay everything's just a noise and universal rules exist that's it and then this this with these tools the, the process is easy okay let's move on to the next one which is uh ooh, live in the dream i like this song okay Okay, so what we did was here at 100, instead of uh, white noise, we left it at pink. So we're going pink all the way. 
at uh, 500 hertz here where pink and brown meet, that elbow point we moved up to 1K. And then the only other thing we, we changed was here on our roll off, we left the elbow points exactly as they are. But instead of 15 and minus 33, we went to minus 9 at 15 and minus 48 for that. The, so it's a steeper roll off. So it's a little bit higher, like here's 15, just to kind of show you. Minus 15 is down like that. So we, we came up on, we extended the high end, but then we went steeper on the roll off. So instead of minus 33, where are you at? Okay, instead of minus 33, we just took it all the way to minus 48. All right. But other than that, everything is the same. We just, again, we moved 500 up to 1K. And at 100, we just left it at pink. All right. Now, for the mixed monolith, everything was fine level wise at 18. Um, all it did was moved it down. It applied gain of minus 0.43. And since everything was fine at 18, with the limiter again, didn't have to change anything. <laughs> uh, 4.26. All is good. Now, let's bring this up, and let's check it out. So here's before. Not bad. And here we go. Much better. Before. that tambourine all right let's go here at the end check some stuff out before And there you go. So, again, works beautifully. Um, let's just move right to the next song, which is going to be uh, Live for the Day. Cool. Okay, so this song is interesting. So remember that all of these songs were recorded over the span of 30 years. This album is a collection of music that they've recorded over 30 years, which at the end of the day, they're all going to sound like they came from the same musical tree at the same musical time. That's the beauty of having noise drive this process. But this song was probably relatively recent, last couple of years. Uh, so the Luffs was at, once it was mastered, the Luffs was sitting at minus 11, which is about where it should be. However, the frequency response needed to be opened up, all right? But we're going to do the exact same thing to this, regardless of whether a song started at minus 17 luffs, you know, as a dynamic range, or minus 11 luffs as a dynamic range. Because, um, well, first, let's go through the what we did here. We're basically kind of back uh, in the original shape. Uh, we put the the... Uh, elbow point that was at 1K uh, for the last song is now back at 500. Uh, we did move the 3K where pink and white uh, join. We moved from 3K to 5K. Uh, we also made the 50 from 10.5 to 12. So we made it a little bit steeper. <clears throat> Excuse me. But, um, you know, we're back to minus 15 here and we're back to minus 33 there. Okay, and at uh, 100 hertz, instead of flattening out we, to white noise, we left that going to pink. But, you know, 62.8, still inverted pink, everything else is still the same. Okay, so mixed monolith didn't have to really do anything with this. Okay, so it was at minus 18, which is exactly where we want to feed the limiter, which is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kind of point out in a minute here. Uh, which So the, the applied gain was only minus 0.08. Okay, but it's about perfection. Now, even though, bring up the limiter here. 
<clears throat> excuse me, even though um, some songs started at minus 17 and this one started at minus 11, when you feed uh, a plug-in like this, like a limiter, when you're feeding it with luffs not going off of peak, it doesn't matter where you're beginning. It's always going to have the same output. You can kind of, you can control how this, you know, that, piece that that device is going to work even though it's a software one how that's going to function um if we were going off a of peak it, you know the the dynamic range could have been at you know minus 10 could have been a minus 12 could have been minus 11 so you're going to have a completely different reaction from the limiter but when you're feeding it minus 18 luffs all the time the reaction is going to be the same regardless of it's only going to do what it needs to do and the output's going to be 14 too and it's not going to end up destroying something Okay, so it really doesn't matter where where things were to begin with, as long as you feed, uh, as long as we're feeding this limiter minus eighteen luffs, we know that it's going to be it's going to work beautifully, and it's going to give um, you know a known result. Okay, so let's uh, listen to this real quick, and here's before the effects now. You'll, you'll hear that the vocals just kind of open up when they come in. Check it out. This is before. Mm, bass, everything opened. Nice. Out. Sleeping the knowledge that times will change Traveling home nice. Back to the place where the sky meets the sea Out. The future will stay So even though it's loud, it's at minus 11, tomorrow, it's dull It never comes Open up Yeah, so this process works when you're remastering your stuff. It works beautifully, okay? Um, now, here's another thing, too. We are remastering, but if we were mastering these songs for the very first time, where do you think they should be? There. Because... It's the same thing. You, even though they've already been, you know, previously compressed and, and collapsed and, and enhanced and, and they've been mastered. If they were, if they hadn't been mastered, okay, then you're going to go through all the processes, you know, before you get to, you know, the limiting stage. But the, your sonic, your frequency response, there's still just a noise element that has to be balanced to noise. And this is still where you, we would want to be. Okay? So... Anyways, let's move to the next song. All right, so here is the original shape, but we have moved 3K down or up to 5K. So all the other songs were here. Oops, not 30. Okay, they were there, but on this song, it benefited from moving it to 5K. Okay, remember, you're just going to take this one and either three, uh, 300, 500, or 1K, and this one's going to be 3K or 5K. On this song, 5K. And then, uh, you know, I, <laughs> I know I'm saying it over and over, but I'm just really trying to stress how easy this is. Uh, and then at 100, it's either white or you just continue to follow pink. All right, so once we made sure we weren't peaking here, um, mixed monolith, everything was fine at minus 18. It did an uh, applied gain of 0.58, so just made sure it was right at 18, which meant that our um, limiter, we were fine right with the preset. We didn't need to do anything to it, okay? So let me bring this up. I will, this is before, and let's listen. Uh, 
Much better. Okay, and so all we did was move the uh, 3K to 5K, basically, on that one. All right, let's go to, what is this one called here? Uh, Golden Angel. All right, got two left here. All right, so this song is interesting. So there's no uh, real drums, at least I don't know when they recorded this, when Ian and, and Christy did this, it was obviously way, way back when, but there was not much low end content down here, like drum wise or otherwise, a lot of it was more low mid. Um, and so if we did the original shape where this was 50, we had 50 and then, and so on, it, it was adding like uh, excessive low end that just didn't sound natural because it just wasn't there. So, but all we did was we took 50 and moved that up to 80 and we took 100 and moved that up to 150. So we still adhered to one, three, and five, our primary block of elbow points. We just shifted this from 50 to 100 to 80 to 150. But other than that, this is the same. We still have at 300, we're going from pink noise to brown and then the other thing we did was we moved from uh instead of 3k which we had been using a lot of the time okay instead of that we used 5k okay and even still there was you know quite a bit of uh high end that came up because you can hear really brought out the shakers and stuff so and then once we did that so that was our shape so even even if you run into something like this which you'll hear uh, in a moment where, you know, 50 to 100 isn't working, no worries. Still adhere to your primary block of elbow points and just move it up 80, 150. And then, but everything else is, is the same. So um, we made sure we weren't peaking and mixed monolith, 18, everything was good. It only <laughs> made an applied uh, adjustment of 0 0.05, but again, I'm a perfectionist, so Point zero five is still point zero five, and then um, of course, then the limiter was fine as it was. Okay, nothing to to do there. Now let's uh, give this a listen, and you'll see what I'm talking about here. Before. It's, it's what this is all about, okay? I mean, that's all we're doing is dabbling in noise and, and to begin with as artists, as, as sonic artists, we're just playing with noise to begin with. Noise is beautiful. Okay, let's move to the last one, <laughs> which is uh, when will we wake up, Okay. 
All right. So here we are at the final song. Um, you can see we're basically back to how things were, but the 3K has been extended up to 5K, and this little 8K that was pink, we moved that to brown, so have just a little steeper. So instead of pink, which is just a subtle one, we wanted brown a little bit steeper roll off there. Okay, now this is another really uh, ethereal type song like the last one, but there's like some, you know, uh, like Taurus bass pedal or something. There's some, you can hear there's sub, you know, content happening. So we kept this nice low end to really sort of enhance that and balance it a long noise down here. Okay, now uh, when we made sure it wasn't peaking, we really didn't need to add anything. It was It was actually right at minus 23. So it didn't add anything. Monolith didn't. But 20, minus 23 to 18, um, we did have to make, an, that's a 5 dB difference. So we added 5 dB on the limiter. So from 426, we went to 926 to make sure we had a minus 14.2 um, output, LUFS output. Okay. And let's bring this up. And here's, let me go before. And this is what, this is our starting and where we, where we end up. But we've given up for this synthetic scene. We'll never make up for what we lost. Big difference. Before. There you go. So, um, Ian and Ian and Christy, <laughs> I know you guys have a boatload of uh, songs that you've recorded through the years. I mean, you've you've been doing music your entire lives. So, blow the dust off those uh, the old songs, all of your old songs. Do this and have a you know enjoy them like they were new again. Um, all right, and all the rest of you do the same. So that's it for Universal Mixing Part 5. Not sure what I'll do for Universal Mixing Part 6, but it'll be coming, and uh, I'll just keep making them. So <clears throat> in closing, white noise to, um, you know, to 100, that's primarily what we used. And then all you have to do from pink to brown is either going to be 300, 500, 1K, and then when it goes from brown back to white noise, it's going to be 3K or 5K. And then just, you know, however you want to kind of do your roll-offs, that's it. And then like on the song just before this, if you happen to have something where there's no drums, it's, it's very ethereal and, you know, 50 to 100 is too much, you know, shift them up. You could be 80, 90, 150, you know what I mean? We used 80 and 150. Uh, but other than that, everything remained the same. Noise will never lie. So, happy mixing. Until next time.